All right, hey everybody, welcome back to Just The Watch. Uh, this is Dave. Uh, today we're gonna be doing a quartz accuracy showdown. I have eight different quartz watches here and we're gonna be going through and testing to see which one is the most accurate and if it even really matters. Like, you know, is, are all quartz watches equally accurate or some significantly more accurate than others? Uh, we're gonna go through and test it. So I'm gonna sync all of these up. I'm gonna let it run for a month and then we'll come back and see. Um, by the time you've, you're watching this video, the month will have passed, so you will see all the results at the end of this video. Let me first, uh, let's clear this away and then I'll introduce each of the watches one by one and then we'll uh, sync them up and yeah, then we'll get the results and see how accurate they are. Okay, so I'm gonna just grab watches randomly and introduce them to you so that it doesn't uh, doesn't bias you for her. This is you know which one's gonna win or not. Um, so I'm just gonna randomly grab them and yeah, we'll see what we got. All right, so first off, we have this Millennial Prestige, which is running a Swiss Ronda quartz movement, the Ronda 705. Uh, so this is the only Swiss uh, quartz movement I can find. We'll see how that one fares compared to uh, some of the Japanese movements that we've got in there. Next up, we have this uh, Spinnaker Hole Chronograph, which is running the Seiko uh, Mecha Quartz VK73. We also have a Timex Weekender, running Timex's notoriously loud um, quartz movement. And yeah, so Timex Weekender, we'll see how that one fares as well. Okay, so my uh, selection for which one I think is gonna win is the Bolova Lunar Pilot. This one's running Bolova's uh, ultra high frequency, 262 kilohertz quartz movement that's supposed to be rated at uh, plus or minus 10 seconds per year. So that should be the, the, the most accurate on the list, but we'll, uh, we'll go through and figure that out. Okay, we also have uh, this Jack Mason Aviator, which is running a Miyota 2315 quartz movement, so kind of an entry-level Japanese quartz movement. Find this in a lot of uh, watches out there. And yeah, we'll test that one as well. Uh, also, we've got uh, Old Faithful Casio uh, F91W digital watch. I don't know if the digital versus analog is gonna have any effect, but we'll see. We'll put that one in the running and see how that one goes. And then sort of on the uh, similar vein, I went to the dollar store and picked up this $1 or 100 yen, this is the Japanese dollar store, it's a 100 yen digital watch, uh, probably Chinese made. So we'll go ahead and run that one through, through the test and see how it goes as well. And last but not least, we have my Citizen Nighthawk running Citizen's EcoDrive movement. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these synced up and while I do, why don't you guys go ahead and uh, yeah, drop me a comment down below. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to and give me your predictions for which one you think is going to be the most accurate. And we'll come back after one month and we'll go through the list. We'll start with the least accurate and move on to the most accurate. All right, so one month has gone by and there was there appears to have been one uh, kind of casualty in the uh, timing. Uh, so the Casio watch that I was having in the running, it's actually my son's watch and he was wearing it and it was running extremely accurate day to day to day and I came back after about five or six days uh, to test it again and I noticed that it had jumped about 16 seconds off which was really unusual. So I, I think he probably played with the buttons and reset it is probably what happened during that five day period where I wasn't timing it. But I can't be 100% sure. It's possible that there was some kind of a weird short in the electronics and it jumped, uh, jumped started you know, losing seconds over the period of that five days, but I don't know. So this one's actually gonna make the list twice. I'll give it the, uh, the actual official timing, what it wound up with at the end of the month, including that jump, and then I'm going to kind of assume that that was my son's fault and um, I'll, I'll use the the average timing up until that point where the jump was recorded and then we'll go through and and see where it would have been if that was accurate so this is gonna make it on the list twice But let's go ahead and run through we'll reset this and see which one was the uh, least accurate of the bunch starting there and we'll work our way up all right, so starting in last place, our eighth place finishing watch, the least accurate uh, of the group, probably no surprise, but it is the Blue Planet, the 
one that I picked up at the Japanese dollar store. So you kind of get what you pay for there. Um, this one was running uh, over the course of the month. It was uh, it ran 106 seconds fast, total deviation. It's about a minute and a half off uh, at the end of a month. That's an average daily rate of 3.54 seconds fast per day. And then some of the statistics that we're going to keep track here is um, so how far off it's going to be in six months and then we'll say how many days it takes before it's one minute off uh, because you know for six months a lot of people have daylight savings time and so you're gonna have to reset your watch every six months anyways when daylight savings times runs around so if the watch is fairly accurate in my case if it's running within one minute over six months to me i would just let it run and then i'd worry about resetting it uh, at daylight savings time and i wouldn't have to worry about it if it's more than a minute off i might start worrying about it it's the kind of thing where you kind of might have to reset it in between uh, but to me, that seems like a good benchmark. But for a lot of people, I, I ran a poll on the channel, and a lot of people said they reset their watch. If it gets one minute off, they reset it. Uh, some people even before it gets one minute off. Uh, so I'll tell you how many days it would take before this watch gets one minute off. Uh, so you would know how, how often you would be resetting the time if you're using this. So in this case, for this uh, little Daiso watch, uh, if you let it run until daylight savings time, so for six months, you would be 637 seconds off, so over 10 minutes off, which in my, in my case is definitely something you would uh, be resetting a number of times during that six month period. And if you're talking about uh, how many days it's going to take before it gets one minute off, uh, after 16 days, you're going to be one minute off, so you'd be changing this like twice a month to keep it running within one minute of accuracy. So if you want to get one of these dollar store watches, um, yeah, you might have to be considered about accuracy. One thing that was interesting is that even though it was pretty far off, it was extremely consistent. And I think this is something you, you're going to see with quartz watches, um, is that you know they might be inaccurate to the point where you know they're not recording the correct time, but they'll be consistently inaccurate. So in this case, it was running uh, 3.5 seconds fast basically every single day, exactly 3.5 seconds fast. So in a sense, it was highly accurate or highly consistent, um, but it just was not, uh, it didn't have the right calibration. It didn't know exactly how long a second was. It was, it was recording cons time consistently, but just not correctly. Um, so yeah, so that was interesting to note. All right, so coming in seventh place, um, possibly on a technicality here, um, is the Casio. So again, assuming that the jump in time was, uh, was the movement's fault and not my son's fault, then it would have been seventh place. We'll give it another chance and we'll assume that it was my son's fault and we'll see where it would have placed uh, if, you if you just take the average time before that jump in time was, uh, was recorded. And yeah, we'll, we'll give it a second chance. But if you assume that the jump in time was the fault of the movement, if there's some like short or something that caused it to spontaneously uh, jump forward uh, over the course of a couple days, then it would have been seventh place. And it would have had a total, you know, if you average this out, so over the, to over the course of the month, it was 16.2 seconds off, which means uh, running fast 16.2 seconds, which is an average daily rate of 0 0.5. Uh, five four seconds per day. Uh, that means over the course of six months, it would have been off by 97.2 seconds. So still way better than that uh, dollar store watch. You know, you're only about a minute and a half off. It's probably to the point where you know you might get annoyed with it and reset it earlier if that's the way it was running. Um, but yeah, it's still pretty good. If it's only a minute and a half off over the course of six months, um, that's not too bad. It would take you 111 days before it would be one minute off. But still, not too bad, I don't think. Okay, let's go on to our next one. Coming in at sixth place is the Timex Weekender. So again, not too much surprise there. I didn't expect Timex's uh, movement to be the most accurate. I don't know if the noise factors into accuracy at all. Um, but yeah, it was still, again, way more accurate than the uh, the Daiso watch, um, significantly more accurate than the Casio if you give the Casio, yeah, again, if the Casio uh, was at fault for that jump in time. Uh, but yeah, over the course of the month, it was running about 10 seconds slow, 9.9 uh, .9 seconds slow, uh, which is an average uh, daily rate of 0 0.33 seconds slow per day. And that means that over the course of a month, you're going to be right around a minute. So zero or 59.4 seconds slow. It would lose 59.4 seconds over the course of a month. And yeah, it would take you about 181 days, so right around six, six months for it to get one minute off. So to me, even though the Timex is 
you know, probably one of the least accurate uh, movements here. Um, I think for quartz watch, it's still acceptable. It's the kind of thing where I probably wouldn't reset it. Uh, I would just let it be slight, you know, like one minute off as a daylight savings time approached. So yeah, so it's within that, uh, that, that window where I think I wouldn't have a problem with it. So moving on to fifth place, and this is a little bit surprising, was uh, the one Swiss watch that we had on there. This Millennial Prestige running the Ronda 705. Um, I kind of thought that, this, that it, the Swiss watches, or the Swiss quartz would have been more accurate than this. And it, you know, it's hard to say because this is the only one that I have. So you know, if I had more uh, Swiss quartz watches to compare it with, maybe the Swiss would have done better. Uh, but in this case, it only ran a little bit better than the Timex. Um, you had a one month deviation of 8.7 seconds fast versus the Timex's 9.9 .9 seconds slow. Uh, so that's an average daily, daily rate of 0 0.29 second, seconds fast per day. And that means over the course of six months, you'd expect it to uh, be running about 52.2 seconds fast. And in, if you wanted to reset it every time it was one minute off, you would have to wait 206 days before it would be off by a full minute. So again, for me, um, it's not that accurate compared to the other ones on the list, but still accurate enough to the point where I wouldn't really worry about it. Um, but yeah, again, that's kind of personal preference. So now we're moving into the top four, and this is where the, the there was a big jump between the Japanese watches and everything else on the list because um, all of the Japanese watches uh, were significantly more accurate than the bottom four on the list, or bottom three if you're counting the Casio as... Uh, yeah, being my son's fault. Um, so yeah, anyways, next on the list, we have this uh, Jack Mason, which is running the Miyota uh, 2315. And this one, yeah, was really accurate. You were looking at a monthly deviation of 3.5 seconds per month. So you went from the uh, that Millennial running that Swiss Ronda movement uh, was 8.7 seconds fast. The Jack Mason running the Miyota movement was only 3.5 seconds fast over the course of a month. So per day, you're, uh, you're looking at 0 0.11 seconds fast per day, 0 0.11 seconds. Um, so really accurate there. That means over the course of six months, you're only going to be 21 seconds off. I think most people wouldn't even notice that. And that means if you wanted to wait until it was one minute off, you'd have to wait uh, 514 days, so over a year before you would reach that point of it being one minute off. So yeah, really impressed um, by even a kind of an entry level Japanese movement here with that Miyota uh, 2315. So really accurate there. Okay, so coming in unofficially at fourth place, this would have uh, knocked out the Jack Mason, um, the Casio. So if we assume that that jump in time was my son's fault, and if we just averaged out the uh, the amount of time that, uh, and if we just averaged out the deviation um, that it was recording up until that point when the jump in time came in, we can assume then that the uh, the Casio would have been about uh, negative 2.82 seconds off over the course of the month if we could sort of average out the, the deviations that it was getting uh, before that jump in time, uh, which would have put it in fourth place, would have made it super accurate. Uh, and again, I think this is probably what happened. So I think this is where the Casio should be. Um, yeah, but again, can't, can't tell for absolute certain. So if we give it the benefit of the doubt, it would have been running 0.2 82 seconds off over the course of the month. That's a daily rate of uh, 0.09 seconds. So really accurate there. Uh, that means over the course of six months, you would only lose about uh, 9.6 seconds uh, slow. And uh, that means if you want to wait for it to be one minute off, you would take uh, 637 days before it was a minute off. So almost two years there. All right, so coming in third place, and this is where we have maybe kind of a little bit of an upset. I did not expect this, but third place we have the Bull of a Lunar Pilot. So I expected this to be first place. I expected it to be doing a lot better, uh, but yeah, it comes in at third place. It had a total one month deviation of 2.5 seconds. It's an average daily deviation of 0.083 seconds. 
so still hyper accurate. That means over the course of six months, you're only going to be 15 seconds fast. And if you wanted to wait until it was one minute off, it would take you 720 days. So again, you know, closer to two years before it's a minute off. Um, but that, that means that right now it's running at about 30 seconds fast per year, where it's supposed to be at 10 seconds fast per year. Um, so I would have expected it to have done better. You know, I'm not really that disappointed. It's, it's kind of disappointing because that is one of the cool selling points of this. It's supposed to have, you know, one of the most accurate quartz uh, movements on the market. So I would have expected it to be better than any of my other quartz watches. The fact that two of the watches that I have um, actually beat it out is kind of surprising. Um, but yeah, we'll see, uh, see which ones beat it. And yeah, let's go ahead and move on. All right, so coming in second place at just a hair better than the Bulova Lunar Pilot is the Citizen Nighthawk, so running the Eco Drive movement. And that one is a total uh, one month deviation of 2.4 seconds fast, so one tenth of a second better than the Lunar Pilot. Average daily rate of 0.08 seconds uh, per day. That means over the course of six months, you're looking at 14.4 seconds fast. And if you wanted to wait until it was one minute off, it would take you 750 days before it was a minute off. So really impressive there. I mean, for me, the, the cool thing about the Ego Drive is that it's solar powered, so you don't have to worry about changing the battery, but it's also extremely accurate. So it's kind of cool to see that, to see, um, yeah, to see the, that not only is the Eco Drive very uh, efficient and very um, practical and, convenient, it's also highly accurate. So I was surprised at, at just how accurate that was. So that means there's only one watch left. And yeah, this was a surprise to me. I didn't expect this, but that uh, Seiko Mecha Quartz that's powering the Spinnaker Hull Chronograph was the most accurate uh, watch uh, on, yeah, in, in, the, in the group. So this one ran at a pretty astounding half a second over the course of a month. So 0.5 seconds over the course of a month. It's an average daily rate of 0.016 seconds fast per day. Uh, that means that over the course of six months, you're looking at three seconds off over six months. Three seconds over, so six seconds off over the course of a year. So that's running within that 10 seconds per year spec that the Lunar Pilot is supposed to be running in. So that was, yeah, that really blew me away. I didn't expect this little uh, Seiko Mecha Quartz movement to have that kind of accuracy in it. Um, and I don't know if it's a fluke. I don't know if it's like, you know, some of them are gonna be a lot less, but apparently some of them at least, and at least this one that I got um, was super accurate. So that was really cool to see. If you wanted to wait until this watch was one minute off, you would have to wait 300, no, 3,600 days. So basically like 10 years before this is a minute off. Um, so that's crazy. Um, I was really surprised to see that and yeah, by far the most accurate one on the list. So I, yeah, again, I would have expected these numbers to be coming out of the bull of a lunar pilot. The fact that it came out of that uh, Seiko uh, Mecha Quartz, the VK73, really surprising and good for Seiko for putting out, yeah, that, that accurate of a movement and then also having that little mechanical component there didn't, didn't affect it at all. Um, yeah, so that, that wraps up our quartz roundup. And yeah, a little, some, some, some surprising results there. Didn't expect to see all of that. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think, uh, which if you guys were on or off on your predictions, if you have timed any of your own quartz movements over the course of a month, uh, let me know if this has paralleled any of your experiences, especially if anybody has any experience with uh, any other Swiss, Swiss quartz movements. I'd be curious to see if you have any numbers that would compare uh, with the one uh, Swiss Ronda that I had in there. I'll go ahead and publish at the end of this video uh, just the final results in a table so you guys can see all that. I'll put it down in the description as well uh, to make it a little bit easier to see the results. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and we will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.